Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video. And for this one, well, it was inevitable that I was going to end up doing this video at some point. Um, there are some people, uh, some pretty sad people I would say, uh, who have been waiting some two years for me to do this. So here it finally is. Uh, this is uh, Elite, which, uh, well, for Commodore 64, was released by Firebird in 1985. Uh, the original game uh, came out for the BBC Micro in 84. Um, and uh, basically this changed gaming forever. Uh, th that is not overstating it at all. Um, Nothing like this had been seen uh, prior to this game's uh, release. Uh, perhaps the most surprising thing was the fact that uh, it was initially released for the BBC Micro. In fact, for a year or so, it was a, a BBC Micro exclusive. And uh, the result is that this game alone was responsible for the uh, BBC Micro getting a bit of a resurgence in, uh, as far as uh, sales went. There were, there were people going out and buying BBC Micro computers purely so they could get this. So it was perhaps inevitable that uh, the uh, other big computers of the time would eventually get their own uh, uh, conversions. Uh, although there were licensing problems originally uh, because uh, the BBC Micro version was uh, published by Acornsoft and they didn't do uh, you know, games for anything or any kind of program for any other computer but the uh, well, Acorn computers. They did um, BBC Micro and uh, Electron uh, uh, games. They even brought out a version of Elite for the Electron. Um, and eventually Firebird uh, got the license to do the uh, conversions for firstly the Spectrum and then the Commodore 64. And the C64 version was the last one to be released. Uh, in fact it was quite late because they had all sorts of uh, issues when it came to actually doing the conversion. And if you ask me, they didn't really solve them with any real conviction. It, it was a case of they did as good a, as good a job as they could, but there were some uh, like hardware issues with Commodore 64 that it simply, you know, the game couldn't overcome. Most notably, the slow processor speed of the uh, the 6502 processor that the uh, 64 had. And you would have thought that uh, converting from BBC Micro to Commodore 64 wouldn't be that difficult, because um, the BBC Micro, I'm pretty sure, also used the uh, 6502 processor, but it was a lot faster. The... Um, the Commodore 64 has only ran at, uh, I think it was um, 950 kilohertz. So it wasn't even a 1 megahertz uh, processor. And that's where the problems came in. Because the game is using vector graphics, as you can clearly see. Uh, which means that uh, the, the dedicated graphics hardware that uh, the Commodore 64 had was never used. Um, vector graphics don't require um, graphics hardware, or at least they didn't at this time, they required raw processor power, which the Commodore 64 lacked. So, um, yes, uh, created by David Braben, uh, if you follow my Elite Dangerous uh, videos you will know how big a fan of him I am, and Ian Bell. Now, uh, to be blunt, Ian Bell did the vast majority of the programming. Uh, the actual quality of the game in terms of how well it runs 
it's entirely down to him. David Braben basically was the designer. He was the one who came up with all the ideas. And uh, Ian Bell was the one who basically turned them into an actual program. Uh, so, yeah, he gets all of the credit as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think that goes a long way to uh, explaining the fucking debacle that is Elite Dangerous because the best programmer isn't there. Indeed, never will be. You ask Ian Bell what he thinks of David Braven these days and it's probably a good you know, mirror image of what I think of him. And my fan's gone out. Now, while we're on the title page, I can go through um, uh, the whole uh, flight deck because uh, what you're seeing here is uh, well, what you see throughout the entire game. Uh, the rotating ship in front of us is the Cobra Mark III, which is the ship you fly. Uh, you cannot change your ship. You're in the Cobra Mark III from start to finish. It wasn't until Frontier, which was uh, the follow up to Elite before you could uh, change ships. Now one thing that uh, really does impress me regarding the uh, graphics of uh, Elite is the fact that while it's using vector graphics it does hide the uh, surfaces that would not be on view. Say for example we see here the uh, rather complicated uh, graphics of the uh, top and then it goes to the underside and you're not looking straight through it. Uh, that takes a lot of programming skill. Uh, there are a lot of games, uh, particularly on the Commodore 64, that used uh, vector graphics where they didn't do that and you could always see through everything. Um, Mercenary is uh, an example of that. And Mercenary is a decent game but um, yeah, the vector graphics aren't coded quite so well because you're constantly seeing through it all the time. There is one particular instance in Mercenary where they actually use that to provide a, a visual, uh, yeah, basically a visual joke. If you've played uh, Mercenary, you almost certainly know what I'm referring to there. Um... So, well, if you uh, look down the left hand side, so FS is your fore shield, AS aft shield, FU fuel, CT cabin temperature, LT laser temperature, AL is altitude, so it's all pretty self explanatory. Underneath that you've got the icon representing the missile, you can carry up to four missiles. And then on the uh, right hand side, SP is speed, uh, RL is uh, roll. Uh, DC is dive and climb and then you have one two three four they are your energy banks once the fourth energy bank has depleted you are dead and then in the middle is perhaps the most revolutionary feature of uh, that uh, elite brought to the gaming world the uh, 3d radar and the strangest thing about the uh, 3D radar thing here is that this was a very late addition to the game. Um, throughout most of the uh, development times, that just wasn't there. And uh, I think it was something like only six months prior to uh, the game being due for publication that this was uh, actually introduced. And it works phenomenally well. It, it clearly shows you where the objects are and also whether they are above or below you and how far above and below you they are. And um, because of that it's featured in all four of the Elite games completely unchanged. Um, it hasn't needed changing. So it works. And the top right corner of the uh, radar there, you have the, um, it's a bit like a sort of compass heading, I suppose. I, I can't really think of what else to describe it. But it uh, always shows you where uh, the planet that you are approaching um, 
whereabouts it's located so if you have it uh, centered then uh, you, you're going to be flying straight towards it the only time that changes is when you enter the uh, docking station safety zone or safety space some people call it safety space uh, you'll see an S appear uh, below that compass point and then the uh, point will uh, take you in the direction of the uh, docking station so anyway let's uh, get a game underway I will load a new commander so we'll change it to disk and uh, commander's names can only have six letters so I'm actually commander Lucos in uh, this one so here we are then, so present system is live, uh, I haven't selected a hyperspace destination yet, condition is docked obviously, 7 light years of fuel, 10,000 credits, my legal status is clean and my rating is harmless, and I have a fully equipped ship. <laughs> yeah, um, having a fully equipped ship, and uh, by amazing coincidence, exactly 10,000 credits and yet my rating is still harmless I'll leave you to figure out how I managed to do that basically I I wanted the uh, ship fully uh, equipped so that I could show you more of uh, uh, what's in it if you play Elite Dangerous and let's be frank most people who watch my videos or watch my channel do so for my Elite Dangerous videos so they should know all about it quite a few of these will be familiar to you but there are some that are not because uh, in some cases uh, the first Elite was the only time they appeared uh, in others they just gradually disappeared over the uh, various sequels so the first item is this skate pod, which is not in... Actually, I don't think it appeared in anything other than this one. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't. But it's, it's, it does what it says. I mean, if you are in serious trouble, you uh, launch the escape pod, and it takes you to the docking station of the system you are in. Uh, the problem is that it is a one-shot use, so... I didn't muffle it completely so um, yeah once you've used it you've got to buy it again and obviously if you're carrying any cargo that all gets left behind uh, fuel scoops do exactly what they do in uh, all the other elite games but in this one you need to have the fuel scoops if you want to be able to uh, pick up any cargo that's uh, been dropped by any ships you've destroyed uh, the ECM system, um, this stayed pretty much the same throughout uh, the first three games and then along came Elite Dangerous and completely changed it. Uh, if an incoming missile, or you know, if uh, an enemy ship launches a missile, you just use the ECM and it destroys it. Later on in uh, Frontier, they added uh, a second ECM system, the military ECM, and there were various different uh, missiles you could use so some missiles were impervious to the regular ECM but the military ECM would destroy them and there are also some missiles which are impervious to all ECM systems so uh, the energy bomb that uh, did not appear in anything other than uh, the original game it's basically a smart bomb uh, if you are in trouble use the energy bomb it's bloody expensive so you don't want to be using that you know willy-nilly again it's a one-shot deal uh, once you've used it you've got to buy it again before you can uh, use it again uh, so it, it's it's an emergency measure really extra energy unit um, that uh, boosts the speed that uh, your energy banks and then your shields uh, recharge pretty self-explanatory uh, self stuff docking computers again self-explanatory they've been in every single game um, actually I'll come back to docking computers later on when, uh, when it comes to it galactic hyperspace that is different to uh, the regular uh, uh, hyperspace jump 
that doesn't take you from one system to uh, another that takes you to a completely different galaxy I'll explain that uh, as we uh, go along and then finally the missile, uh, missiles, the uh, weapons so I have a front military laser which is the most powerful laser you can get uh, rear mining laser so I can mine asteroids left beam laser, right pulse laser uh, basically I've just chosen those so that I can show you the four uh, weapon types so uh, my inventory, well, as you can see I ha don't have anything but I do have a large cargo bay initially you can carry up to 20 tons of cargo with the uh, cargo bay extension that gives you the large cargo bay you can then carry 35 uh, sell cargo, I haven't got any to sell so Alright, so, uh, press 3, that takes you to the equipped ship. My ship's already fully equipped, so I don't need any of that stuff. So, we'll just uh, exit that one. Now, here is the galactic chart. So, we are in Galaxy 1. All of these dots you can visit. I believe there are 256 systems in each galaxy. And there are 8 galaxies. So there are a lot of systems you can visit. Um, and to get from one galaxy to the next, it's always in sequence. So after this, it will be Galaxy 2. That's where you use the galactic uh, hyper uh, hyperspace thing. Again, that is a one-shot deal. Once you've used it, you've got to buy it again if you want to go on to uh, Galaxy 2 or 3 or wherever. So... This is the uh, short range chart, so I am in lathe where uh, you always start. Um, now I seem to remember Diso is agricultural, there's no point taking uh, food there, or at least the at least the uh, for industrial corporate state tech level and so that's actually quite similar to what it is in uh, Elite Dangerous um, right well as I'm here we'll go through uh, what this is all telling you so distance is pretty obvious you have a uh, jump range limit of seven light years there's nothing you can do to uh, extend that range seven is your max uh, the economy gives you an idea of what cargo to take there because uh, if it's industrial then it means they will pay uh, more for food. The fact that this is poor industrial means okay yeah they will still pay you more for food but not that great. Um, there are other ones like uh, there's uh, high tech there's uh, agricultural we saw when I was checking out Dizo. Uh There are a few others that I just can't remember because it's been so long since I played this. And then the government, that basically gives you an idea of how um, easy or difficult a flight you are going to have. Um, the government here is corporate state. That is the easiest. You are highly unlikely to encounter any other ships on your way to uh, the uh, uh, docking station there. Uh, an anarchy system, you will be f having to uh, fight off uh, enemy ships nearly constantly. Feudal is not quite as bad, but there are still going to be a lot of other ships. And I can't I think dictatorship is the next easiest. Then there's uh, democracy. And then I think corporate state, like that five. I'm sure there were more than five, but they're the five I can remember anyway. Tech level, the higher the tech level, the uh, better the uh, upgrades you can get. With this place, tech level 11. I think tech level 10 means you can buy pretty much everything. So 11, I will be able to buy whatever upgrades I want. Population is just... If everything after this, population, gross productivity and average radius, that's just information for whatever and then there's always the uh, uh, additional information that appears at the bottom the planet Leasty is reasonably fabled for zero-g cricket and Leastian evil juice 
because if you play Elite Dangerous, you know that you can buy Leastian Evil Juice and uh, sell that on. It's one of the rare commodities. Now, uh, 7 brings up the market prices. This is only giving us the prices within uh, Lave. You have to uh, hyperspace to the next system to uh, find out uh, their market prices. So, I can't actually remember what... Uh, whoops, that's to find. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, if you know about a planet is that's within a certain uh, galaxy, press F and it will uh, ask you for the planet name, type in the planet and it will show you whereabouts it is. So, um, oh, so Lave is a rich agricultural, so yeah, food here is going to be quite cheap. Diesel is average agriculture. There's no point taking food to another agricultural. What about Riot? Poor agricultural. Fuck, it's all fucking agricultural. What about Zayance? Average industrial. It's corporate stake tech level 12. Yeah, okay, this planet is a tedious place. <laughs> oh, okay, well that's where I'm going to go now. I'll head to Zayance. Uh, but uh, I want to buy uh, some cargo. Um, so, well, I might as well buy food. It looks like it's not selling, they, they haven't got any to sell here. Yeah, it's my inventory. So, yeah, that's to buy cargo, but they haven't got any. <laughs> so, okay, I was going to buy cargo here, but there's no point because there's no cargo actually available for me to buy. That's a lot of fucking use. Alright, well, um, in that case, we'll head to Seance. It really is not a good idea to do what I am doing here, which is to fly with no cargo at all, especially if you're starting off. You've got to start making money quickly um, in order to upgrade your ship, because when you start... Um, under equipment, you have front pulse laser, and that is it. You have nothing else. So, you, yeah, you really need to uh, get your money together and start buying stuff in uh, to sort your ship out ASAP. Okay, so let's launch. So as you can see, uh, we are in the safety zone, so that's what that S down at the bottom there is uh, indicating. So right in front of us is the uh, planet Lave. Now at the moment it is just showing as a circle, but if I uh, uh, pause it and then start her up again. Now we've got the planet lines on there to give you a bit of a 3D effect. The problem is that with that uh, active, there are more graphics being rendered on screen, which means that uh, the game runs slower, and as you can see, they are very, very flickery. So what I shall do is turn them off. They have various views. Uh, there's the rear view. If you can see the uh, ship through the uh, very cluttered mining laser site there, that's uh, the docking station that we just left, the old Coriolis station, which will be familiar to anybody who plays uh, Elite Dangerous. So our left view, that is the beam laser sights. And then the right view, that is your pulse laser sights. So... Uh, Something's just uh, flown into me. Hoping it's not another ship because that will change my legal status to uh, either fugitive or well, offender originally, uh, fugitive afterwards. Anyway, you don't need to be in, uh, facing uh, the particular uh, system you want to go to. Just press H, height of space, and away we go. Countdown is very fast. So, 
there is uh, planet uh, Zayance. So we're going full speed. You press J to uh, mm -hmm. jump. So there's uh, something coming towards us here. Looks like an asteroid. So I'm going to slow down. Get it. In, get it in the sights. Okay, now I'm having this much trouble. One, two, right. Now we'll let it pass over us. And use the mining laser. There we go. So that should hopefully have split it up into fragments, but it looks like it has completely destroyed it. Yes, it has. So I got half a credit for that. Uh, one difference between the Commodore 64 version and any other version is that when you... Uh, there's a ship in the area, not that thing in front of me. That's either another asteroid or a boulder. Um, when you destroy something, it tells you the uh, total amount of credits you've got rather than telling you um, how much you made for that kill. All other versions, they tell you what you got. Uh, well, this fucker is attacking me. Okay. So he didn't do it. Okay. I don't know what ship it was. It uh, was too far away. I got five credits for taking him out. So it was only something quite small. There are a lot of ships in this game that do not appear in uh, Elite Dangerous, which is annoying. But the problem is that um, many of those ships are quite small, quite uh, you know, very light, and therefore it's too late to put them in Elite Dangerous now because there would be no point in adding them. So ships like uh, the Gecko, the Moray Starboat, the Cougar, um, the Worm Landing Craft, the Shuttle, all of these, I think, would have been great to have them in uh, Elite Dangerous. But they're not. Then you've got some decent fighters like the Crate, uh, the Mamba. Um, there's also a Cobra Mark uh, One. Uh, again, they're not in it. And then there's even larger ships like the, uh, the Boa. Uh, there's the Transporter. All of these uh, other ships, none of these, none of them are in Elite Dangerous either. And so I think it's a real shame. They should have them all in it. So what ship is this? In, well, he's attacking. He hasn't hit me yet. I want to see what it is. It's a... It's a python. That's how. The, that's what the pythons look like in uh, this game. They are quite a large uh, ship, so uh, I'll get some decent credits for taking out this fucker. There we go. He hasn't dropped any uh, cargo either. There we go. So I'm now up to ten thousand and twenty-six. So uh, let's get on with the review then, shall we? Um, graphics. I have a bit of a problem with the Commodore 64 version of this game, uh, and it's entirely due to the graphics. The vector graphics are very, very flickery, and even though they have the, uh, you know, they've been well programmed insofar as you know they're not completely see-through. Um, the game slows down a hell of a lot when it's rendering anything on the screen. So, for example, if I change to uh, right view, I'm now travelling a lot faster than I am at the uh, front view as we've entered the safety zone. So we will see the uh, docking station fairly soon. There it is. Um, 
I'll tell you now, on the Commodore 64 version, docking is not my strong point. I'm fucking hopeless at it. On the Amiga version, because I, I had the uh, Amiga version as well as the uh, Commodore 64, the Amiga version docking was a fucking doddle. So much so that the docking computer was actually the last thing I bought for my ship. Um, but one thing that the Amiga version and all of the other 8-bit versions uh, had was that uh, once you're in the safety zone, if you then uh, use the docking computer, all you did was uh, start it up and it would straight away dock you. Uh, you, you would just appear you know, as uh, docked on the, uh, uh, no, at the station. On the Commodore 64 version, as you're saying is, the Amiga version you had the option of either that happening or what the Commodore 64 version does, which is it takes you through the whole manoeuvre, which I find very tedious. Here you are seeing the second type of uh, Coriolis station, because there are two types in uh, Elite. This one is the dodecahedron uh, type. The uh, the slot to uh, enter the uh, uh, station itself is smaller on these Coriolis uh, dodecahedron Coriolis stations than it is on uh, the regular sized ones like the one that uh, I left at Lave. So, well, there it is. I'm nowhere near fucking centralised. So what I will do is start the docking computer and uh, you get the uh, great music. So while that's doing that, no fucking fags left. Good job I got this packet. Um, yeah, so we'll carry on with the graphics. As I say, um, I have a bit of a problem with the graphics. They are very, very flickery. And they spoil the game because, as I say, of the, the flickering and the uh, how much they slow down. The other thing is with the docking computer. If I had uh, tried docking manually like that, I would have been destroyed. <laughs> So we are here, um, so oh, at least this place does have some stuff for sale. Now this was an industrial wasn't it? Now their price on narcotics is low. There were an awful lot of bullshitters uh, that played uh, Elite uh, back in the day. Uh, I, I constantly heard people who were saying, oh yes, I, from the moment I started playing it, all, all I did was uh, buy and sell narcotics and I was able to destroy uh, docking stations. And fuck off, did you? If you do nothing but buy narcotics from the very start, you've got the police constantly hounding you, uh, you will be destroyed. So, no, you didn't do that. And you cannot destroy docking stations, just like you can't in Elite Dangerous. Anyway, in a rather disjointed way, I have covered graphics. Um, yeah, uh, very flickering, there's an awful lot of slowdown when um, any of the vectors are on screen. So I'm not a fan. I do need to buy... Uh, no, I don't want to skip out of this, I don't want that. I need to equip ship. I need to buy fuel. So as you can see, this place has everything, but uh, I've already got everything. Whoops. Where's the fucking info? There it is. Um, so my legal status is offender. That's not so good. Hmm. I have no idea why I got that offender uh, rating. It must have been when uh, that thing that flew into me, it must have been another ship. And uh, yeah, they uh, weren't uh, weren't best pleased with me for that. But anyway, on to sound. Um, well, I haven't uh, done all of the sound effects yet, but uh, 
I've done a few. Let's um, remind myself what's here. Average industrial. Okay, well, we'll go back to lathe. So, yeah, right. Now, let's see uh, what I can buy that lathe will pay a decent amount for. Probably machinery. Because I want to show you a little bit more on, of the uh, game here. And also some of the uh, other sound effects. In fact, what I'll do, I'll go fucking uh, mad. This is something I would not do. Let's look for either a feudal or an anarchy system. Tire and ace uh, yeah, this should be a, is, is an ore. Confederacy. Quick tree. Multi-government. And Bermira is right on the limit. That's only a multi-government and all. Okay, so I'm not going to show you a fucking uh, feudal or uh, what does he call it? Anarchy. Well, we'll go back here to dictatorship. Retake your culture. I've no idea what uh, cargo to take, so I won't bother taking any. So this is only being done for the video. So, uh, right, let's launch again. And let's hike the space to live. Let's get away from the planet so that then the countdown goes down quicker. You see what I mean? About how much the graphics slow the uh, game down. Right. Now, I'm still a fender. That's not good. Well, that's as close to the planet as we can get, so it doesn't look like I'm going to see a great deal here. So what I'll do, I'll dock here, and then we'll go to uh, Ride Quat, which is an anarchy system, and we'll see quite a lot of... Uh, quite a lot of action. So the sound effects are quite sparse. Um, what sound effects are there are okay for the, mo for, for the most part. Some of them do great. That sound while you're going through the hyperspace is annoying. So is the sound when you use the ECM. Yeah. Um, but uh, otherwise they're all pretty innocuous stuff. All pretty standard. Um, and the gameplay... On first impressions, you think the game is going to be unbelievably complex. Uh, in fact, it's quite simple, which um, which I like. Uh, but the thing that gets me most about this game is, uh, is even though the Commodore 64 version is the worst version of the lot, uh, by a distance, I hate to say, you know, the, the Spectrum version is better, which really does pain me to say but it, it is true um, I totally lost the thread of what I was going to say yeah it's uh, it looks complex but it but it isn't but uh, the most impressive thing is that all of this all of the different ships uh, there are there are well over 20 ships uh, you know 20 different ship types there are 256 uh, systems in each galaxy and eight galaxies and then all of these sound effects and the way the game plays including the uh, superb uh, uh, 3d radar all of this was done on a computer that only had 32k ram now the 64 obviously has more but i'm talking about like the initial uh, development when it was uh, done on a uh, BBC Micro. Not quite in range to see the uh, docking station yet, but uh, we are approaching it. There it 
is it was down here somewhere there it is but the fact that all of this was fitted into you know into a game that ran on a computer with 32k ram makes a fucking mockery of what we are getting in elite dangerous at the moment now of course the hardcore uh, elite dangerous fanboys uh, the majority of whom these days are people who never played the original Elite and weren't around to see how much of an impact this game had on gaming um, at the time, will say, well, there's more to do in Elite Dangerous than there is in this game. Because what I've shown you here is almost it. Well, yeah, but... Again, this this was designed for a 32K computer. The amount of stuff that has been added to Elite Dangerous in no way um, adds up to any sort of program that justifies the amount of uh, resources that it uses. I mean, look at how many, say, 256 systems per galaxy and eight galaxies and this game doesn't have to be fucking online all the time it's got it all programmed in it's, it's all part of the game so why did Elite Dangerous have to be um, fucking online only with all of the uh, you know uh, galactic uh, data and that kept on a server not actually kept uh, on the uh, within the game itself that's installed on your computer. Why did they have to do that? Alright, we'll use the dock computer again. Now when this game came out it caused a bit of a stir, uh, the Commodore 64 version anyway, uh, regarding its review. Um, yes, it was widely established and that uh, Elite was a fantastic game and it did genuinely revolutionise gaming um, on every home computer. But the Commodore 64 version just wasn't that great uh, because of the graphics problems. And yet, Zap64 magazine gave it a gold medal and rated it 95%. Problem is, the two senior reviewers weren't there at the time. It was just uh, it was Bob something or other, I can't remember his full name. Bob Martins. And um, he, it was only him who did the review. And uh, when... Um, oh, fuck off... I see, so this place now has a uh, cargo for me to buy. Anyway, right, so I need my fuel back. Now let's buy some cargo. Uh, what are the whoops, prices? Right, looks like it's food. They've only got 17 tons, so I can't fill my hold with it. So, uh, textiles looks quite cheap. Uh, have I got space for 16? No, I haven't, have I? Okay, it appears I do. Oh, that'll do. Right, let's uh, select uh, Ride Quat. Yep, and a key. 
it's also a poor agricultural so I'm probably going to lose money on here that's assuming that I live long enough to actually get to the docking station oops Fuck off keep pressing the wrong fucking keys I want to launch there we go so you can jump the height space whenever you like <laughs> now if you get that uh, hyperspace graphic appearing twice it means that you're a, you've had a misjump and you are in witch space surrounded by Thargoids and you're almost certainly going to be dead within the next uh, few seconds there are several ships here all right so I'll use the energy bomb if I can remember the key there we go so the energy bomb there, that counts as a smart bomb, it's destroyed all of the uh, ships that were attacking me. But that's now gone, I don't have that uh, anymore. So I have to buy that back, and let's say that thing is expensive. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we have more ships. Let's uh, prepare a missile, so I've got a uh, missile um, prepared. now targeted so we'll fire the missile at him that looks like a member it is a member so these other ships will either be other members or they might be crates there it is the only other ship in the area but now at least one other ship has uh, shown up he's out of range these other fuckers are attacking me oh, fuck it we'll go after these cunts then there's the sun oh, that's a cobra mark three i think now if I collide with him I would survive it but I would take uh, some hefty damage to my uh, shields the laser temperature is going up yeah, it's overheating that fucker down he's also dropped some cargo now the other ship was uh, attacking me and there's another two ships have shown up that's a further lance So yeah, I'm surrounded by uh, enemy ships now, and more have just shown up. Right, so that's that fucker down. The third lance is still in the area, and yeah, there's some other ships hanging around as well. You can't yaw in uh, this game, you can only uh, do uh, roll and uh, pitch. So, uh, fuck it hell, there's loads out here now. Come on, you fucker. <laughs> hear how much it's slowing down because there's so much uh, being rendered on the screen oh, so cut down. just started hitting him and now I'm overheating again speed up a bit see looking at it this thing I'm, a, I'm lining up is only a fucking asteroid 
or a cargo mm. canister. It's certainly mm. nothing of any value. It looks like there are mm. five other ships in the area, all of whom are firing on me. Uh, there's, that's a Cobra Mark 1. Actually, it might have been one of the smaller, like a gecko or something. No, that definitely is a Cobra Mark 1. Just so many fucking ships mm. showing up now. Right, well, got rid of that fucker anyway. So there's five ships, maybe six in the area. just turned up. I should have saved the fucking energy bomb for now. That's a crate. Crates don't take a lot of hits as I think I've just demonstrated. But uh, they have a lot of firepower. My four shields are now down. So now any t uh, hits on the front will go uh, take the energy straight from my uh, energy banks. Shields are now starting to charge, but they will not last long. So I'm in a bit of bother here. Four shields and half shields are now very, very low. I'm going to use my escape capture in a moment. That's a crate, I think. Whoa, I nearly flew into the fucker. Alright, so let's show you the uh, escape capture if I can remember the key. There we go. That's uh, us then leaving the ship and we have now arrived in right quiet. Minus a... Uh, uh, escape capsule and minus the energy bomb. So uh, well, we'll sell our food for a loss. <laughs> and our textiles also for a loss. Oh, bollocks. I thought that was to, to sell it. Uh, I want to buy it. I, I think I've just bought stuff. Uh, Food. 21, right, yes, sell those. Oh yes, that's right. I left all my cargo behind when I used the escape capsule. Um, and I don't think I can uh, buy any uh, upgrades because this place has such a low tech level that uh, it hasn't got any of the parts I, I need. Nope, none. Well, I can actually buy the missile that I used, so I'm back up to full missiles. But, uh, well, there you go. Anyway, that is uh, Elite, then, for Commodore 64. Uh, like I say, uh, the game itself is a, a 10 out of 10. It uh, really did change gaming as we know it. But the Commodore 64 version does have some problems. Um, it slows down a hell of a lot whenever it's rendering any graphics and as you saw during that fight if there are a lot of ships on screen uh, particularly once you've destroyed them it can slow to a fucking crawl um, so the Commodore 64 version I will give uh, 7.5 out of 10 it's not um, you know, it's not terrible uh, it, it's, you know, it's Elite, it's still a great game, but it is by far the worst version of Elite uh, that was uh, that was released. So that's it then, that is uh, Elite for Commodore 64, 7.5 out of 10, that brings this review to an end, and we will see you at the next one.